three, two. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Wayne's World. And welcome to the surprise drop of 21st Century Rocker Mom Podcast with my very, very special guest host, Sir Robert of McCallum, writer, director, filmmaker, producer, extraordinaire, and husband and father extraordinaire, Rob McCallum. Well, thank you for having me back. Well, thanks for coming back. You've been a busy, 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 busy man. So you've been a busy bee. So I haven't been able to have you back on the show. But I thought since we were talking movies and television, whose brain could I pick? Well, first, let me say that I was fortunate enough to be on the first two episodes that you did of 21st Century Rocker Mom podcast. And I've listened to every episode since. I'm the first one to hear them. Yes, you are, because you're also my sound engineer. This is true. But I brilliant, you are. I love your podcast. I absolutely love it. It's so funny to me and <laughs> fascinating. And you live with me. But it's, I find it absolutely <laughs> fascinating. And even though I live with you and we've been married for four years. Yes. I, I still have no idea what you're going to say at any given episode. And I know some of the topics that you're going to talk about ahead of time. <laughs> and I still don't know how you're going to say them or how you're going to deliver them. And it, it truly is a treat every week for me to come down and, and edit and mix them and, and put it out for you so you can share with the world. Yeah, so for people who do not know, Rob is the wizard behind this. I have many bearded wizards in my life, but <laughs> but Rob, his, Rob does all the sound engineering, he does the editing, and I mean, he doesn't edit any of the swearing out because that just stays. Because, well. Because why the <laughs> fuck not? <clears throat> it, oh, you said a swear. Yeah, that's right. That's because you're, you're on the show and we swear on the show. Yeah. You're not a, Rob McCallum is not a swearer. <sighs> Maybe so, I am motherfucking tonight. Oh, oh, look at you. Oh, my God. My face is like, what? I, I usually don't swear. You're you're not the only person who's remarked this. I've never thought about it. You don't. You're not a swearer. Anyways. <laughs> yippee ki yay motherfuckers. That brings us on to our topic. Cause we're ta like we were talking 90s. We're talking 90s. We're talking 90s. I've been talking 90s like crazy. And so, like, of course, around the house, we're talking 90s. And... I was like, oh, I want to do a segment all on movies. I'm like, who would I have, who would I have on to do all, like, a 90s segment? And, like, Rob's, like, been so busy with, like, work, and he's been working on, like, a few series, and he's got a lot of stuff going on. He's, like, just, like, sitting there at the table, like, twiddling his thumbs, being like, I don't know. And I'm like, he was like, what about me? I'm like, you're so busy. And so then he agreed to come on, so that was cool. So he'd been busy, so I was like not gonna ask him. But then, so I, so I did, and then he was like, "Oh my God!" Because well, Rob, I don't know. There are a lot of people that love the '90s, but Rob might be. How much do you like? Let's talk about how much you like the '90s, just generally his speaking, like as an era. Oh, it's a very special time to me, and I think that you and I given that we were born in the early 80s and got to be kids through the 80s, but teenagers in the 90s, is the perfect time to grow up. I, I thought about this all day leading up to this chat right now, and I, did, I could not think of any other two-decade compliment where if you were a kid during the 60s and a teenager in the 70s, would that be better? No. If you were a kid in the 70s and a teenager in the 80s, would that be better? No way. A kid in the 80s and a teen in the 90s is so perfect. It does not get better than that. For, for a ton of reasons. There are a lot of reasons. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, being a teenager in the 90s was... It was the shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, what, for all the youngins who yeah. are listening to this. I think the coolest thing is that we got to be teenagers before the internet. Yeah, it's cool that... The, like, the, largely see before that. the internet. Yeah, well, largely before it was, like, available to us. Like, yeah. As consumers, right? Big time. No, that is totally... That's really... That, that's, like, fucking crazy to think of. Yeah, no, like, no cell phones, really? Other than, oh like, God. Zach Morris cell phones and some, you know, a few generation iterations. Of, like, weird phones, like, on movies and stuff like that. But, like... But typically, no cell phones, no internet, just... You know, the, the the nature, the natural flow of connecting, hoping you might run into somebody at the mall or, yeah. you know, remembering people's phone numbers. 
And punching it in on the landline. Oh, yeah, punching it in. Or, like, if you were at your grandparents' house, you probably had, like, a rotary dial phone. Yeah. yeah, like, my oh my Nova totally had one. I don't remember, what, like, what my nan and pop had because I never used the phone at their house. Mm. I don't know who the fuck I would call. It was always weird using somebody else's phone, like, going to another house and having to, like, call home and say, I'll be home for dinner. Don't worry. I'm coming home now. See you soon. Or, like, or, or, or can you come pick me up? It's just, and it's just as weird using somebody else's cell phone. Probably more foreign. It's even weirder. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like I'm like I don't want to touch your cheeky cell phone. Fuck get it the fuck away from my face. <laughs> get your face the fuck away from my Worse face. Worse is when you look at somebody else's phone and Ew, like you no. see where like put it to the ear and you see Ew. like ear crusties Blah. or like wax droppings. It's oil. It's oil. It's seba- It's from all the sebaceous glands. It's fucking gross. I don't want to talk about this medical shit. Ah. I, I will tell you this about '90s. You want to talk about movies? Yeah. Regardless of my current day gig occupation as yes. a movie maker, dude. Yes. Movies is probably the last form of media I think about when I think about the '90s. For Cause, you? Yeah, because for me it's music. Yeah, for you I know it's largely music. Music, sure. then video games, then TV, and then movies. But I think that's just because being a teen in the '90s, you know. TV's free, it's at home. Exactly. Video games, you know, I'm playing them all the time, you know, between NES and like Sega Genesis and N64 and Dreamcast when it came out in September 9th, 1999. It was a big day. Uh, for you? Well, for me. Especially. And then. I'm pretty sure you have movies. like a movie of that day. No, I don't have a movie of that day. What do you have a movie of? Wait, wait, wait. Like you made a. F- there's uh, the closest pickup video I have. There's there's two, and they're in the 2000s. So I've, I'm already disappointing our 90s listening ah. audience. Yeah, and one was picking up Halo 2, which oh, was yeah. like 2005, maybe four, and the one before that was with um, Jay Bartlett picking yeah. up Perfect Dark, which was an N64 game. But I think it came out in 2000, okay, okay. May 2000. Ooh, so close, eh? And there's footage of Westmount Mall in it. Oh we we walk the the sh- games hadn't arrived at EB there, so we walk all around Westmount Mall. Cause it's right across from, yeah. from Music World. Yeah. Oh damn! So you're just like pacing. Yeah, and we're like going in other stores and doing surveys and stuff like that. Yeah, it's where just we go up to, to the people? food court. Yeah. What restaurants did you go to? Good restaurants. No, but we do go to the food court for a while. We're oh, just being obnoxious idiots. teenagers. Well, yeah. oh, you wouldn't even been teenagers at that point. Uh, I wasn't quite 19. I was 18. So I was, 18? I, I was okay, actually okay, so an adult. So obnoxious. I was an adult. Well, mm. I still am. Frankly. Not like you are when you're 18. Uh, I was pretty shy as a kid and as a teen. I think I'm probably grown like out of my shell more now as I think an adult. Maybe you're you're more confident in yourself. I wouldn't call you more obnoxious. confident in I my ca- obnoxia. I wouldn't call you obnoxious. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice of you. To your face. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this surprise guest appearance. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I just think, like, you're just more, you're more boisterous now because you, you know, like, if if you have the knowledge and you have, like, the experience behind you, you can be more confident in the way you, you are. When you're 18, you don't know shit. You might act like you do. But when you're 18, you don't know I've, oh, I've never thought I've really known shit in my whole life. <laughs> I'll, I'll be completely honest. You pick any subject, I, I don't feel like I, I, I don't know, know it. I, I don't know shit. There are things that I like to do in a certain way, like when it comes to like writing scripts and like you know making projects happen. That's as closest to knowing how I like to. But that's a process. That doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. Oh, such an artiste. Not really. I make movies about stuff that I like. And this is why we're here talking about movies. What if you were going to make 90s movies? What the hell would you make? What did you like? What what movies did you like in the 90s? Because I know some of them. So many. I mean, where where do you even start? Where do you start, Rob McCallum? You make films for a fucking living. Yeah, but I make documentaries. And interestingly enough, I had to go and research what documentaries came out in the 90s because I did not watch 
documentaries. Turns out there was three I did watch. Yeah, I know. There was a few I watched in the 90s. But I, I didn't watch any documentaries in the 90s. It wasn't really until Bowling for Columbine that came out in 2000, I believe, or 2001, that the whole new documentary subculture really took off. That blew up then, yes. That and was like, but just before that, I mean, there were some really poignant documentaries that did come out in the 90s. The three docs that stuck out for me in the 90s were Beyond the Mat, which is a wrestling, wrestling documentary, documentary with Mick Foley in like the early stages of The Rock's career and mm -hmm. Terry Funk. And Jake the Snake Roberts, oh. where he was like going downhill, like bad, like like Hasselhoff, like eating a like a baconator like, bad, like messed up. Yeah, bad. thankfully he came back in another mm. documentary with Diamond Dallas Page, which was like the big comeback, which was good to see him kind of return to his former years. Uh, and Kurt and Courtney, that's a great documentary. It's it's fucked. It's such a fucked documentary. Oh my god. I love that documentary for so many re reasons. Yeah. One of the reasons I will say is El Duce, just for how fucking crazy he is. You know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh my God. And they're like, El Duce died shortly after this film. I'm like, because he's a fucking maniac. Like, look at this guy. He like looks like a crazy junkyard dog come to life. Like, that was El Duce. <laughs> he looks so fucking crazy. The After Kurt and Corny, what do you got? What do you got for me? The other one was Hitman Heart. So two wrestling, oh, two documentaries. wrestling documentaries. I was really into wrestling in the loved, 90s. Right. I was like, I, you? I was, oh, the Attitude Era. I mean, first of all, I love like early 90s, like yeah. WrestleMania 6, like Hogan vs. Warrior. Oh, fucking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It, I think this is something I feel like you and Mercedes would fight over, like Hulk Hogan like versus the Ultimate Warrior. Like she dressed up for him. She's as, a huge as, Warrior fan. She loves the Ultimate I think Warrior. I, she dressed up as the Ultimate Warrior for Halloween one year. I'm a huge Warrior fan too. I know you are. They have Warrior action figures right now done in He-Man style. Oh, fuck. It, it looks so awesome. I bet you awesome. they look like, like ripped as fuck. I'll, like, I'll show you after if I don't get crucified for showing you toys. You won't get crucified for showing me toys. We'll see. Uh, but I also love the Attitude Era. With like Stone Cold and The Rock and Triple H and all that. See, that wasn't my era. I was, I was more. Well, it, you felt the effects of that. I, era. I felt the rumble. Well, you, when era. you had Mercedes on it as as a guest, you talk about how you got a pedigree. Yes, I did get a pedigree, so I know I did feel some of the moves. Definitely. So I, I will say that wrestling was a huge part of '90s TV. To, oh, to make all this fuck. relevant for our listeners, as we just took oh. go down. Like, re 90s was gigantic, like, for wrestling on TV. Oh, my God, it was always on. I watched it, like, crazy because I had, like, a neighbor who, like, loved to watch it. A male neighbor. Like, of course, like, all my, like, best friends when I was a small, small, smaller child were mostly male friends because I wanted to play, like, action figures and none of my girlfriends wanted to do any of that. So, and I wanted to watch, like, wrestling and play Duck Hunt. And I didn't have any girls in the neighborhood that wanted to do that. My next-door neighbor was a boy, so... We watched wrestling like a motherfucker, like, and he had the ring too, which was awesome. But oh my god, I loved like, I loved Bret the Hitman Hart, and and I loved like, I loved Ric Flair because he was just like fucking crazy. Woo, woo! Like he just he was nuts. Like he was just crazy. When it comes to movies in the nineties, yes, for me, it's a little bit of theatrical stuff. Sure. But Why? Because of the budgets in the '90s? No, I mean, I mean, my experience is when I think about watching movies, like going to the sure. movie theater. Yeah. A little bit of that, but again, teenager, so it's not like there was a time in my life I went to ev like I went to movies like every day of the week and saw everything that came out every week. Yes. That wasn't this time. Sure. No. 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 When for, you're a teenager, it's different. For me, distinctly remember the blockbuster video experience and we talked about this because we watched oh, the yeah. last blockbuster documentary not that long ago yes but ninel was my grandma to everybody that doesn't know yes ninel if if my grandpa who i called that dad if, if he went up to the cottage or he was on a work trip or uh, he went camping with the boy scouts and it was just ninel and i we would go to blockbuster and get three or four tapes uh, we would get popcorn from Colonel's in Westmount. Oh, so good. And we'd just make a weekend out of it. You know, and she would watch movies in her room, and I would watch movies in the basement. And sometimes there'd be, like, a pick for, like, both of us. Like, so we would both be interested in watching? We'd usually get, like, two movies each, and sometimes there'd be a crossover pick. Or she'd be like, oh, what do you got there? Oh, maybe I'll sit down and watch this for a few minutes with you. And she'd watch, like, the whole thing. Oh. But, like, nothing, like, crazy or anything. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, you know, I, I never got, like, oh, this, this movie's too old for you or anything like that. I, yeah. Pretty, I think. I can't tell you what I... I don't have any 
specific rental memories of like, oh, I remember she rented this for me. You yeah. likely have made like responsible choices. Like I got spanked in a blockbuster for being an asshole. That doesn't surprise me. Like at like, ooh, I was like 12 or 13. Was it Maria? Did she spank you? Oh yeah, Maria spanked my ass in Blockbuster. Yeah, she, she we, I had a friend like that sleeping over. Oh, of course it does. Because it's like hilarious. I had a friend sleeping over and of course I wanted to rent a movie that was like totally inappropriate. My mom's just like, why don't you guys rent Evil Dead? I'm just like, mom, have you seen Evil Dead? Whatever. I'm like, anyway, so I want to rent this. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, come on, mom, let's rent it. And she's like, no, you're not renting it. And of course I was probably being a total asshole. Like, surprise. Mm. And she like, like spanked me like with the movie like she just like slapped me across the ass with it she was just like no 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 and then she like spanked me out the door of blockbuster like in westmount like by the pizza hut yeah on wonderland between pizza hut and mcdonald's because i'm still in therapy counseling for it i'm like <laughs> i'm kidding but like oh my god like my friend was there too and like she still had to sleep over i was like okay i want to die now I'm going to the kids section to go fucking hide my That's head That's nothing. I, I've, I'm sure I've told you about when I had my, oh, I think it was 10th birthday party. No, it would have been like 8 or 9th. <laughs> and Back to the Future 3 came out and I rented that movie. And it was like the first weekend it came out and it happened to fall on my birthday. Critters 2. And you love Back I, to the Future movies. Yes. Generally speaking. And there was some other movie. And we had watched Critters 2 Ooh, and something. Critters 2. Which was a really weird thing because my grandparents watched it with me and i had eight other friends over your grandparents watched critters 2 with you well they wanted to make sure we were okay yeah because that's a horrifying fucking film yeah and i believe i, I think there was a scene with some nudity in it like I said, oh there's so, boobs yeah there's i boobies seem to remember that that that's imprinted on my head for some reason because uh, you're probably like an eight-year-old boy that saw boobs well yeah it was interesting and we'd watch back to the future 3 of course but we wouldn't go to sleep we're all just so amped up from like being hyper and i got sent to my room <gasps> during my own birthday party sleepover because they thought well we'll get the ringleader out of there we'll send him to his room to sleep and we'll everybody else will die and, and i remember i was Fuck. so embarrassed and i was <gasps> so angry and so when i went to my room oh, i put shit. my ear to like the vent and i could hear them downstairs i'm like are they going through my stuff what are they doing, are they doing? What, what are they doing now how come i can't be a part of this and i was so upset oh, i would have been upset too Fuck, i would have been embarrassed oh shit it was really awkward coming downstairs in the morning because like my friends were there and they were like waking up and i was just like hey guys how's it going and you stayed up there all night like you were yeah. totally like good yeah oh fuck i would have come downstairs and would have been like fuck the police fuck oh fuck, no 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 fuck my, the my grandparents were like sitting on the stairs like there's there no they were sitting on the stairs so i couldn't get out of my bedroom door oh my go, god yeah, oh yeah you were in prison you were yeah. ring. it here. wasn't me though who was it well, I can't say Kids, that. I'm not that wouldn't be. Say. I bet you I know who. And, it was. and one other friend that had come over had mm. he was he was having some separation anxiety, so he had to go home. Oh, because like they missed their parents. Yeah, it just you know. That it, happened it to was me the at first, sleepovers. It was the first kale. time that they had kind of stayed over. Mm -hmm. I think certainly at my place before. Sure. That and, happened to me as a so. kid at sleepovers. Like I'd be like, oh, I miss my mom or I miss my dad or like whatever, and I'd I'd want to come home. Yeah. It's like sometimes you just want, or you want to sleep in your own bed or whatever it is, right? Oh, but it was so cool to see Back to the Future 3. Oh, God. Like, like for yeah. your birthday, too, no less. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Another 90s movie experience that was theatrical was going to see the Ninja Turtles movie opening weekend. The first one? Yeah. My, oh. my, gra my grandpa took like four or five of us. Oh, my God. It was awesome. That movie was like a huge 90s movie for me. Yeah. I remember not loving it in the theater, thinking, what? This is so different than the cartoon. Were you confused or was it just like... It, it was just a culture shock because I had seen the trailer and I had seen the movie poster and I had a movie poster from when I was a kid. Like we, you knew they were going to be... Yeah, yeah. You knew they were going to be puppets. Yeah, I knew they were going to be in suits. Like suits. And yeah. then the, the logo comes out and it swooshes around a corner while they're in the sewer before they reveal themselves. We just see silhouettes of them. Yes. And the cartoon logo comes around. I'm like, okay, so what is this going to be like? And I just remember feeling like there's a disconnect. Like, this isn't like the cartoon at all. This isn't like, okay, there's some pizza talk. It's not as slapsticky. It's a little sure. dark. I remember thinking, it was, oh, no, it's okay. But when I got it on home video, on VHS, 
That's when I truly fell in love with it and watched it like, over. Watched and it, over watched it, yeah. And over. You know me, I watch stuff over and over and over and, and over. And yeah, a lot of people do that with like things that they really like, their favorite movies. Like I can't tell you how many times I've I've seen it's not a '90s movie, but Grease, like ridiculous. It's stupid the amount of times I've seen Grease. When did you discover Grease? Did you discover it in the '90s or when you were younger? It would have been in the '80s. Yeah, like, okay. yeah. I watched it before I was way too, too. Yeah, I wasn't ready to watch it yet when I watched it. My dad owned a video store when we were kids, yeah. so like we always got things on like I mean like I, I still think that's like the coolest thing ever. But like when I talked to your dad about, it, I remember it was like one of the first things I talked to him about when I met him for the and first time. He wanted time. to talk to him about it so bad. He's like, "Oh yeah, that was a lifetime ago." I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll never ask you about that again." I know it's like he like completely shut it down on, and Dad. did not want to leave any opening for any other discussions. And it was so about, cool. I was just like, like they right. had movie land and he had all view TV. Like and... here I am, your future son-in-law. Like, Maybe he didn't think so at the time or whatever. But, but like you're at my time, like my partner. Definitely, I had moved in already, like, and it's like I'm a filmmaker, and like my father-in-law owned a video store in the '90s. Let's make a movie about this. Like you want, it's so you want cool. To talk? No. So you asked me what I thought, like when I think of the '90s, what movies comes to mind? Yeah, immediately, like if it, like no brainer, like off the top. Uh, off the top, it's it's more the independent stuff. Sure. It's Pulp Fiction, it's Clerks, it's Small like, Rats, it's Dazed and Confused, um, Train Spotting. Mm -hmm. Those are those are the core '90s movies. Talky, uh, pop culture referencing, uh, you know, different stylistically from Studio Fair. Yeah. Kind of movies. Yeah. Quotable movies. Oh, yeah. Things that people still say now. Things where you hear lines of dialogue that you had never heard in movies before. Yeah. Like Snoochie Boochies and stuff like that. Like everybody knows that that's Jay and Silent Bob. Well, just like Royale with cheese. Yeah. It's like everyone's going to know, you know that's Pulp Fiction. Like Choose Life and, yeah. you know, oh, all that stuff. And mm -hmm. be a lot cooler if you did. It'd be a lot cooler. And everyone, yeah. Wooderson. Just like I said in the last episode, like everyone's got a Wooderson in their friend group. In all those movies. Mm -hmm. amazing soundtracks and the soundtracks oh. for those movies become an extension of those movies because mm -hmm. you know you, you don't necessarily you can't rent those movies you know or go see them in the theater over and over and over again and i was too young to see some and we had to rent them but you don't yeah. have them forever but you could have the soundtrack mm -hmm. and, and listen those, to it and those songs were so prominent in those movies like they were like a main character like when you heard like those different like tracks come up. Oh yeah. Like for like sure. Slow Ride by Fog Hat and like Days and Confused. You oh know my exactly god. Exactly what scene that is. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Exactly. And so when you listen to the soundtrack, it's like you're reliving those those moments in the movie over and over again. Especially uh, with train spotting. Oh, oh my, my god. Goodness. Big time. And some of those films had two like two soundtrack releases. They had like A and B, like mm -hmm. Days and Confused and Train Spotting did. And I had both like albums where I had the Days and Confused, I had the tapes. Because when I was in Kitty and we're driving to, I think we were driving to like Milwaukee for Milwaukee Metal Fest. And we had a tape deck in this like Winnebago that we had rented to go there and whatever. And they were like, put on some tunes. And I had these tapes from Dazed and Confused soundtrack. And they just like immediately put everybody in a good mood. And you know what I mean? And that was the 90s too. It was like 1998. Like it was the late 90s, but it was still the 90s. Yeah. And with like the such like you say good soundtrack. I was doing that to like the Clueless soundtrack today because like as soon as I, I thought hear, I heard Rolling with my homies. Oh, you did hear Rolling with your homies. Thanks, with, Snoop Rob. You totally heard it. I was like, is that Rolling with my homies? Oh is my that goodness. Coolio? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> he, he, he was well because like all I can think of that movie is like like the Muffs and Kim Shattuck. Yeah, May it, she rest but, in but peace. they reference Rolling. With the homies, like yeah. like Brittany Murphy's character talks about Alden and rolling with the homies. Oh yeah, I know she does. And then they're like doing it at a party. I'm trying. You know, I can't think of that soundtrack off the top of my head what the track listing would be, but I know the musical score. But is But you know so it important. starts looking out a dirty old yeah. window. Yeah. Outside the cars in the city go wrecking. Oh, you know what other soundtrack from the '90s stands out? What? Dumb and Dumber. Oh my God! Big time between like new Peter age... Pumpkinhead. Be yep. Yeah. Oh my Peter Pumpkinhead. Yeah, exactly. Came to town, and then here we go, way too fast. Yeah. Don't slow down, we're gonna crash. And of course, New Age Girl. Yes. Don't uh, eat me, hey, but and you a movie, sure like a the movie. bone. Now here is a movie that has a fucking. The soundtrack is the tits. It's awesome. Armageddon. 
Armageddon. Don't want to close my eyes. Thanks, Aerosmith. That's a, that's a great tune. But that they didn't write, but uh, it's still a great song. I know, I'm a, I know they didn't write it. Oh, you made me forget. Oh. I have no notes in front of me. I'm just doing this for my brain. Yeah, me too. Well, you're dumb and dumber. Where were you? Empire Records, because this mm. is a movie that has an amazing soundtrack. Amazing. Amazing. Like, there's so many good bands on it. And it's a 90s movie, but it's 25 years old. Rob had never seen it. Yeah. Had never seen it. And, like, I talked about this on my other episode, but the only person who can, like, properly articulate this is you. Because you're the one who hadn't seen it. Like, you hadn't seen it through teenage eyes, like, when I saw it. Yeah, I didn't grow up with it. No, hell, hell no. And so, I don't know why. I don't know how you missed the boat on that one. I don't know either. Like, it, it wasn't like, hey, should we watch it? I'm like, no, I don't want to watch that. It was. It just never came up. It, it doesn't remind me of a movie that you wouldn't watch. Like, you're not really, like, like a snob when it comes to movies. You're like, yeah, I'll watch that. Sure. Well, I pretty much watch kind you of watch anything. anything. There's, there's really not too much that I'm just like, I have no interest in that. I've literally never heard you say that. Yeah. Literally. Like, literally I don't, and never. I don't know if that's because I make movies that I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll find something to take away from. Well, but you usually find like a bright side with everything. Like, you're pretty... Yeah. It's, I'm a kind of positive guy like that. It's good. Yeah, I get Sure. Okay. It, I think it's good. <laughs> okay. Whatever. But yeah, I had never watched this. And you posted it online on Facebook or on Instagram and people are like... Are are you even part of the human race or something like that? Like, where were you? How come are you dead? Like, <laughs> and I was just like, I I don't know. Why are you laughing? Are you dead? No, I'm not dead. It's just like just somehow I I miss it. But like, you must be dead inside for not seeing it like, by records. Well, you're definitely not dead inside. Well, if you were, like, you're you're alive now. Yeah. So and how do you it, feel? I I told you I was I'm so excited to talk about this because. On one hand, it feels like a brand new movie because it was a brand new movie to me when we watched it. And it felt like, okay, is this like, you know, a 90s throwback movie where they're trying to make it like the 90s, you know, but it's 2021. Yeah, like painfully trying to like set design this as the 90s. In the way that The Wedding Singer was trying to be like very on the nose about here's a movie set in the 80s 10 years later. This is really 80s. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there's only a 10 year gap from when Wedding Singer came out to what the, the era they were talking Actually about. Actually was. But it feels so vastly different oh, feels, from when we watched it. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Big time. That's another 90s movie. Which I is know. a great Hilarious. 90s movie even though it's about the 80s. A lot of 90s movies with Adam Sandler were fucking ridiculously hysterical. Happy Gilmore is the best probably for me think- though. I mean Wedding Singer is great. Big Daddy is good. It's so good. I will always love Billy Madison just because oh god. It's I good just love and it. and it's really cornball-y, it's so weird silly. absurdist humor stuff. Like, like Mississippi needs a break too. Oh my god. <laughs> and I literally picture every fucking teacher now because like yeah. I just appreciate teachers fucking so much. Yeah. And now more so more than ever. But like, God damn, I'd be putting paste on my fucking face too. Yeah. Paste to the face, Miss Lippy. Yeah, but Empire Records, when I watched it, I, I wasn't like, it didn't feel like they were trying to do something like that wasn't accurately 90s. It felt fairly genuine. Yeah. And their portrayal of things. I understand now why it gets compared to Days to Confused often. And it was very strange for me to watch it when we did because it's like Days to Confused came out in the 90s and was 20 years removed from the time period of the 70s. So here I am in like 2020 watching a movie in the 90s. So like it had that same Such like time gap for my brain, if that, that makes feel. sense. No, I get it. But when it came out, it's, it's, it's in the 90s. It's about the 90s. And it doesn't look like they're trying to make it the 90s. Like it just feels like we're just making a present day film. Yeah. They just and it. to see like the record stores, like the way that they are, to see the posters, the type of graffiti. You even pointed out like the Game Boy that get, that's being oh my played. God, and it's the just Game like, Boy, yeah. Lucas is playing Game Boy. And it's not even the fashion. I mean, the fashion is sort of part of it, but it's not like in your face like, hey, this is the 90s and this is how people dress. It's like... Yeah, well, that, there were that, movies like that, but that was not Seeing that, just like everything about that was just like, it's an instant teleportation device and I'm suddenly a teenager again watching this, feeling like if I went to the mall, this is... You were what, suddenly a teenager again that night. This is what it would be like. And, and for me... <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't put Empire Records next to Days Confused as as a comparable. 
-hmm. I would put Mallrats next to Empire Records because yeah. Mallrats is in the 90s. It's very much the 90s. Again, killer soundtrack. It like, centers around this Killer place. soundtrack oh for Mallrats. Uh, One of, of our course, songs is on, 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 on that on Oh, that I was wondering if you were going to label Suzanne. it with si Suzanne is one of our songs. All that I, I wanted of a girl. Ooh, yo, all, all that, that I need in know. this world. Fucking Weezer's fucking best. Oh, my God. Ooh. Drive me wild, Suzanne. Ooh, you're all that I wanted. Yeah, wow. that... Oh my god, that movie is great, and the soundtrack is just like killer, front to back, and all the little like blurbs, like where they have like the scenes, like my cousin Walter jerked off on an airplane. Once. All the weird like non segue stuff, oh, yeah, fuck, non sequitur it's so stuff. So funny. Yeah, and that film it has a really interesting backstory on how it got made and mm -hmm. how it got trashed. And I mean, I'm a fairly big Kevin Smith fan, I guess you well, could say. Well, you you met Kevin Smith what? In before the pandemic, you were yeah. in California, mm -hmm. am I right? Yep. Okay, where were you in California? PowerCon. Yes. The, the world's he biggest He-Man and She-Ra fan convention. Holy PowerCon. motherfucking fuck. That's, that's exciting. I saw pictures from it. It looked fucking crazy. I can't even tell you what it was like to meet Kevin Smith. I can't even imagine. Because he was one of the first filmmakers so identified cool. with as, that guy makes movies. I want to make movies. Because he's just such a... Like, I had never looked at a filmmaker like that before. he just before. seems like a down-to-earth, regular guy. That's why he seems so so, so chill. Like, Well, he's so chill because he's a huge stoner. He, he loves, loves, the loves, loves to smoke weed. He also loves to smoke vegan. He's also like a vegan or a vegetarian now after he had his like, cardiovascular... I don't cardio know what his current status is and you, if that's in flux and if you have meat once, does that make you not a vegetarian anymore? I don't know what the rules are. I don't know the rules. I don't know his lifestyle. I'm not a biographer, but he's the very first filmmaker identified with, oh, that guy makes films and that guy makes films that are different than anybody else. The only other yeah. filmmakers that I knew by name before Kevin Smith were... Jim Henson, mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas. Really? Like, for me, I knew, like, ro like this is a horrible no. example, but, like, Roman Polanski. Not because he nope. was crazy, because I'm Polish. Yeah, not at that age. Really not at that age? I, I mean, I knew of course I, I knew films, but I didn't know the director or mm -hmm. the writer. Okay. Well, I mean, Polanski know? I knew because I saw Rosemary's Baby, again, way more than, like, earlier than I probably should have. I would have I would have said George Lucas directed all three Star, Star Wars, Wars films, movies. but he didn't. He directed A New Hope, and that's it. Exactly. You know, he came in and took directing duties on Return of the Jedi or helped fill in for Richard Marquand, but... But he wasn't the main No, but I would have said guy. at that point, like, I didn't know... I mean, I was 15, you know? I wasn't a credit hunter. I wasn't, like, the Tarantino type or, like, that guy from Scream, another 90s huge movie. Oh, my God, and then it ended up being, like, a whole thing. Like, so many Screams followed was, after was that. Was there four films in total I think or there's like five? I think there's like five or six. Like, there's a lot. I th yeah, I thought there was only four, mm. and then the TV series, and then mm -hmm. that came out recently. And then there I was like know. all those like scary movies that like parodied them. That's another big 90s they thing. They were funny, though. Like, parodies yeah. were a huge 90s thing. Yeah. Parody movies were fucking enormous. Like, anything that you could make fun of, they pretty much did. And the stuff with Anna Ferris, that shit was hilarious. She is funny. She's a funny actress. They don't. She's I don't hysterical. think she gets enough credit. There's a few people like that. Mm -hmm. Anna Ferris, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Banks is another one. She, she is, is goddamn hilarious and talented. Oh my god, she's. And funny. she worked with Kevin Smith and Zach and Mary. Oh yeah, Zach and Mary make a porno, and, and then Seth Rogen was in that. Yeah. That was a funny movie. I, it was funny. It was. It's been a long time. I've only seen it once. I saw it in the theater. I thought. Eh, it's the same kind of stuff that he's doing. It didn't really inspire me in, in new ways. No. Um, definitely not. It was funny. Yeah, I, I, I need to go back and watch that. I'm Not something I need to do, but something that no. I ought to do. <laughs> I ought to do that. I ought to do that. Like, Seth Rogen has lost, like, a million pounds, actually. I saw him on his... Yeah, him and Jonah Hill have lost a lot of weight. They, I mean... They, good for them. It's good for them. Seth Rogen looks like I was actually like a little bit, like, worried about him. But I know he's, like, been working, like, at his weed company, so he probably, like, hasn't been getting a lot of sleep, or maybe he hasn't been smoking enough indica, because maybe he should have the munchies, like, for working at a 
like having a weed company. Well, maybe he's just not stressed anymore, and he has the time to dedicate and the finances to carry him through. To do some more exercise. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Of, that's a big excuse for a lot of people. Right? Oh, I don't for have the sure. time to work out. I don't have the finances. I'm too stressed. You know, like, I can't. There's like a lot of excuses not to like that's, take some time for thing. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I to totally that. agree. Uh, oh, what's you can always throw on a movie money? and get your ass on the elliptical. Yeah, could do that. Uh, Reservoir Dogs was a 90s film as well, 92. But I didn't see that for years. In fact, I didn't see Reservoir Dogs until like after Kill Bill. I didn't see Reservoir Dogs until I was like in grade 8. And it was like a secret like that I saw it. <laughs> like I would have gotten shit. Like I went over to just like some... That, that's what happened for Pulp Fiction for me. I went really? over to my friend... We'll just call him Matt G. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah. And he had rented Pulp Fiction. And he had already lent me the soundtrack by then, too. Before, oh, before I saw it. Oh, that G. And I was like, and, and Matt was really into a lot of, like, Frank Zappa stuff. And, like, huge Beatles fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive, like, 60s and 70s, like, music aficionado. He had a Columbia House. Oh, my God. Talk about 90s throwback. Jeez. Columbia House membership, and I signed up for it. With the pennies? Yeah. And he's oh. like, okay. And he's like, all right, Rob, what, what do you want to do? I'll set this all up for you. And I just gave him money. And, like, he basically just had a subscription and got nothing from it, but helped me facilitate it. And you know what first CD I got? What was your first? What <laughs> You're going to laugh. first Columbia House subscription CD? Murder was the case. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Murder was the case. My first CD that I went out and bought was... Snoop Rob. Holy fuck. My first CD that I went out and like bought with my own money? No, that's not the first CD I bought. That's oh, the first CD ordered. from Columbia I didn't House. order anything from Columbia House. The first one I bought with my own money was Garbage. Like the first garbage album yeah that starts with like super vixen that has like all the yeah. pink feathers on the front yeah just, like, the G. is that feathers i thought it was like pink like ectoplasm or I'll show, i have the cd i will show you I'll i'm show not you. shocked that you have that cd butch fig <laughs> shirley manson <laughs> um is that what <laughs> i'm only happy when it rains yeah you couldn't help yourself i'm only happy when it's complicated it's a great track awesome. Um, the whole album's like amazing. Yeah. Butch Vig's a crazy ass producer. And that was around the whole like Nevermind era too, so. Yeah. I didn't know he produced that. I know he played bass for them, but that's awesome. That explains the production value. It though. explains the production value on yeah. it, like amazingly. And, and and fortunately, that production value had like carried forth and is on that garbage album as well. Yeah. Which is awesome. And I mean, like, that garbage ended up being in a n soundtrack of another 90s movie, which was Lorman. Which was Romeo and Juliet, the readaptation of that. That was on my list. That because, was, and that was uh, one of the few theatrical experiences I saw. Absolutely fucking stunning, and I'm pretty sure. Is that number one crush? Oh, it was number one crush. Boom, Look at that boom, deep boom, cut. Boom, 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 and boom, and, she, boom, and they're at the party when boom, boom, DiCaprio's boom, like behind boom, the fish tanks and stuff, mm -hmm. looking up, and she's up kind of on the higher staircase. Oh, I would die. Claire for Danes, you. is it? It was Claire Danes from my so-called life. Another fucking ninety show. Oh my god. Jordan Catalano. You got Jordan. growing pains in my so called life. Oh my god. Um what about Dawson's Creek? Of course it's a huge T V show for like, me. Like I can't like You know it is. <sighs> my love for Dawson's Creek is like it's ridiculous. And so is yours. Like Yeah. You and I were both like Dawson's Creek. We lovers. watched we watched a lot of the creek while you were pregnant with Scarlet. Exactly, because I was like really fucking pregnant when i was pregnant with scarlet i was like and even when oh, she was born yeah. we were I'm still a watching beast but i was huge i was a super yeah. beast but we were always looking for something to watch because yeah you know because i had to have my feet up yeah we didn't have a <laughs> lot of resources and so you had your feet up we were up weird hours even before you had given birth to scarlet and mm. we just kind of put the creek on and just burned through episodes even if we didn't watch them all and fell asleep which was your first experience with the TV in the bedroom. Which was weird. And here I we never, are watching since Dawson's I was a, Creek. Since I was a teenager, I had not had a TV in my bedroom. And I was just like, no, this is just where you go to sleep. And then somehow you like sweet talked my ass into like... Because you wanted to watch them. You couldn't just sit there. And the bed was the only place that you could be comfortable enough I was all the time. gigantic. Like I had, And my, then I rearranged the whole bedroom. Yep. So I could watch my shows. 
And they go, okay, watch just go shows. watch your stories because I'd be up at three o'clock in the morning watching fucking Call the Midwife. Oh, scaring yeah. Scaring the shit out of myself about birth and midwives in England. Amazing. Oh, fuck. Don't watch that when you're pregnant, girls. Let's fuck. Like, just don't do it. But, like, anyway, so Robin put this TV in the bedroom. So, of course, we got, like, a whole shitload of, like, 90s movies. Like, I remember watching, like, Wayne's World on it. and like One and two, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Jurassic Park. Which was pro- it, which is probably my favorite movie of all time. If I'm ever pressed to pick a favorite movie of all time. Especially from the 90s. 93 Jurassic Park. Oh. N- Ninel took me to the theater to see it. And I remember I was at my friend's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got called home early. It was after school, and I got called home early for dinner. I wasn't supposed to go for dinner for another half hour or so. Uh, I didn't know that my grandpa was going to be busy or working. He had gone out of town already or up to the cottage or whatever, and Nino called me up and said, why don't you come home? Got a surprise for you. I thought, <laughs> okay. I, I was like, all right, guys, see you later. I got to go home. Like sure. She called my friend's house to tell me to come home. You're like, okay. Home. Well, I'm like, what's up? She's like, well, we're going to go to the show. Because that's what she calls the movies. Yeah, the my, mom would say, my mom would say too. She's like, well, let's go to the show. I'm like, okay. And then she didn't tell me what we were seeing. Really? I had no idea. Ninel surprised you with oh, Jurassic yeah. Park? Yeah. And we went downtown to Galleria to see it. And we had seen a billboard on the way downtown. She goes, see that? I said, yeah. She goes, that's what we're going to go see. And what it was did you like, think in your I was brain? like, no way. She's like, yep. I was like, cool. And I, I think we got McDonald's before. Oh God! Double and he, and he McDonald's, and I think McDonald's had the the movie tie-in or oh, whatever. Oh, they had the cups and everything, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I seem to remember cups. that being part of it, and then going to to watch it, and I had nightmares from about the raptors. It's so fucking scary. Like people, most people don't realize that, like it's Jurassic awesome. Park. To me, you want to get all genre, like crazy. it's everything. It's all genre. It is, but it's a horror movie. It's scary, certainly man. horror. Elements. It scares the fucking shit. Sci-fi, out of me. horror, thriller. Suspense, mystery, um, family, everything. you know, everything. Every there's 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 lots to mine. Action, in that adventure, film. It, it just, and because it has so many genres, like each scene plays differently, and that's why it feels so fresh all all the time. Plus, but, it has Jeff Goldblum, which is and he's just fantastic, and mm-hmm. the whole cast is what makes that movie work. Oh, they all so work well yeah, together. The way they work together yeah. is amazing. But yeah, and I mean, I know it's littered with tons of continuity errors, let alone like l- the logic pass on how some of this stuff works. Whatever. But guess what? But you're going to a movie, you know the movie's about bringing dinosaurs back, and then you're going to question other kind of is stuff. Is it going like, to be you know, contrived? Let it go. Probably, exactly. Let it go. It's so. a movie about dinosaurs. Is it a fun mo- movie to watch? Does it make yeah. you feel good when you watch it? Yeah, it fucking yeah. does. Is it a fun time? Big time. I would probably give other big shout outs to these were definitely blockbuster rentals Forrest Gump. Oh God! I'm and Apollo myself. thirteen. Really? Yeah, Jurassic Park definitely. When I had it on VHS, it was like I wore the tape out. It's probably pretty pretty brutal. Apollo thirteen was a movie I became obsessed with. Really? I don't know why. I hmm. still love it to the. I bought it on VHS. I've bought it on DVD. I've bought you it. You and on I've Blu-ray. watched it a lot. Yeah, we watch I it. We have it digitally. It. I bought it digitally. Yeah, I. It's just such a good movie. It is a solid film. It's a Again, really solid movie. The cast amazing mm-hmm. everybody is awesome in that yep you know tom hanks gary, kevin bacon gary, gary sinise, sinise is in it yeah bill paxton Fuck. you know just fantastic solid solid other really good 90s movies now i know you've never seen this one but it's an oliver stone film the doors like the biopic was that the 90s or was that the 80s that was the 90s well mm. well i love val kilmer which Who brings me it? to my favorite Val Kilmer, Kilmer film. What's that? It's not Top Gun because that would be an 80s film. Yes, it would. It's not Batman Forever, although I really do like Batman Forever. I know you like Batman Forever, and that is not one of my favorites of the Batman movies. Okay, I'm a Robin fan, okay? I, I love Robin, and Robin's in it. And as a filmmaker, looking back at Batman Forever, I can really appreciate it. But let's be honest. I love Jim Carrey. I, and, I know, and I know that's why you I love that. I love Jim Carrey. And if we're talking 90s movies, we have to talk. Jim Carrey. Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura, When when Nature Calls. Oh, my Dumb God. and Dumber. Batman Forever. The Cable Guy. Oh, my God. The Cable I know Guy. I you love The Cable Guy more than, like, any of that. You know what, I'm not Jim, a huge fan of Liar Liar. I was not a huge fan of that one either. But you know what one I did love that just barely made it? I loved... I loved Man, Man on, on the, the moon. moon. Yeah. I oh love Truman God. Show and Man on the Moon equally. Both Mila Schwarman. 
so no, 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 no. Peter no. Weir did Truman Peter Show. Weir, sorry. Yeah, I was like, I was like, Milos Forman was 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 Man on the Moon. Yeah, only. and he also did People vs. Larry Flint. Yes, he did. And that was another film that I loved. Yeah, that had uh, Courtney, Courtney Love, Love was the both tie. Of them. Yeah, that was... like, Courtney Love was your tie in there because. Courtney yeah. Love played Althea Flint in The People vs. Larry Flint, and then she played Lynn Margulies, obviously, who was Andy Kaufman's yeah. partner and, I mean, basically his wife in, in, in Man on the Moon, which was just fabulous. Him playing Andy Kaufman in, like, in a biopic was so good. Jim Carrey and And then anything. the documentary that just came out on it. Oh, is amazing. Jim and Andy. Yeah. If you haven't checked on that Netflix. out. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Fantastic. Oh, my I, God. I, I love watching the documentary because I love the movie that much and I love Jim Carrey that much. And he's just in a really interesting place right now. People think he's, you know, out to lunch. He's a little loony. I don't think uh, so. He's figured it out. His, his semi, you know, true autobiography that came out is a fascinating listen. I don't think, you know, it's I so don't cool. think he's lost his shit at all. I think he's figured it out I think he knows and he's ahead of the curve. Yeah, exactly. I think people are just like, oh, I think people are a little bit scared of like where he is. Maybe they're scared it's that It makes them already... uncomfortable. Exactly. But, but then, you know, he does something like Sonic the Hedgehog recently, and it rakes in a ton of cash. You're like, oh, that's Jim Carrey again. It's like, it's always been Jim Carrey. It's not him again. It's not him again. It's yeah. just, it's Jim Carrey. But my favorite Val Kilmer movie, before we got down the Jim Carrey path. <laughs> Jim to- Carrey rabbit hole. Tombstone. Oh, fuck. Tombstone. Again, again, another movie with so a stellar good. ass cast and to me it's my favorite western fucking kurt russell's in it like kurt shut russell the fuck up okay and this will be a good segue so kurt russell's in it of course val kilmer's in it mm-hmm. bill paxton's in it sam elliott's in it billy zane's in it um powers, billy zane in Power, the membrane powers Woo! booth is in it oh my god and do you know who else is in it who jason Priestley. oh jesus Oh my god. You should see your face right now. Because I was a seriously a Beverly Hills 90210 type of hoe. You got a bit of a Brenda look right now. I watched that show. Brenda, huh? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to take that and put that in my back pocket. Yeah. 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 Nobody had a beard on that show, surprisingly, because they were all 30. Not till later. Not, Not till, till later. later. I know. Some of the some... older seasons. I watched the first few seasons, like, religiously. I was, re- I really liked it. But I was a Saved by the Bell guy. So, like, it was an easy transition for me. Oh, I watched both. There and... was no transition for me. No, but what I mean, like, it was easy for me to jump on. Oh, for sure. For we sure. had for talked it was about, an like, easy show to, like, watch. We yeah. talked about how, like, Melrose Place was, like, it felt very foreign to us Fuck by Melrose comparison Place to, like, me. I was like, no. no. I was like, suck at Melrose Place. What the fuck is this? How old are these people? 40? Yeah, I, and then at some point I stopped watching 90210. I don't know why. And then I got into it in the later seasons. And I remember watching the, the series finale. Oh. I came in like after uh, Tiffany Thiessen at that point was part of the cast. Oh, yeah, because it wasn't Tiffany Amber Thiessen. No, it was anymore. just Tiffany Thiessen at that point. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, that was the end of it. And the end of it. But, I mean, like, I remember watching, like, 90210, like, the graduation. My sister and I had, like, the tape. And we'd watch it, like, over and over again. It was, like, the graduation. Plus, there was, like, flashbacks to, like, the best episodes ever. Clip show. Like, I mean, you got to think about, like, they really covered, even in 90210, like, shows like that in the 90s. They covered some really, like, dicey topics. I remember one, like, very specific, like, show where they covered date rape. Like, Kelly had talked about it. She had, like, a sleepover. I don't know. Do you remember that episode? I think I do. Was that the same one where they were, like, Donna and David were considering whether they were going to... Like, go all the way. For the first time. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, like, the girls had had, like, a sleepover, and, like, they'd done, like, Truth or Dare or something. And, like, the girls were talking about, and, like, Kelly had talked about how she'd been, like, assaulted, like, in the woods. And it was the first time that they really openly talked about, like, date rape, like, on a 90s television show for teens. And it was just really, it was big. That show addressed a lot of things that a lot of 90s shows for teens didn't. It addressed sexual assault. It addressed homophobia. It addressed racism. It addressed a lot of things that... Those show you wouldn't think like a show like Beverly Hills 90210. It, it addressed suicide. Yeah, because I mean, frankly, the Saved by the Bell would have been like the biggest precursor to 90210, mm-hmm. and it, I mean, it talked about 
drugs a bit. Homelessness. Like, oh. I, to a degree. I mean, it wasn't like a serious discussion. It was like, here's our Christmas two-part special and, oh, you don't ho- have a home? But you're okay. Eh. But I think it was like a digestible. It was a, it was way a digestible to explain yeah. homelessness to white privileged children. Probably yeah. horrible, but true. But I mean, like really, like a lot of those shows tackled concepts that hadn't been tackled in, especially shows that were being fed to kids at that age. If you had to pick two TV shows that are quintessentially '90s. What are what are the top two shows? Oh God, does that the Full House? Okay, because they're quint- does it doesn't have to be ones that I like. No, okay, I mean, you don't just... have to like them. There, there's two that I have that I have distinctly in mind that I think are the landmark '90s TV shows. I would say shows. Full House for sure. Did it start in the '80s though? Ooh, I don't, I, I don't know. I, no, I think it started in the '90s. I think it was like '92. Full House. And and honestly, at Twin Peaks. Well, we're going to talk about Twin Peaks on another episode, I'm told. Another episode or like five, because that episode's going to go on forever. The guests <laughs> that we have lined up for the Twin Peaks episode is like fucking ridiculous. There's going to be like five people on that episode. It's going to be redonkulous. The, the two shows I'm thinking of, The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. Even though The Simpsons is still running and it started in the 80s. But still, for me, the prime of The Simpsons is the 90s. 90s And like the jokes and the shows and the function. The references, the the bands they had on. Holy shit. And of course, the other huge one. Yeah. Seinfeld. Oh, fuck. What about Friends, motherfucker? You see, I had a question (laughs) mark on (laughs) this. (laughs) Because Friends went into the 2000s as well. But it started. And Frasier did as well. And Maybe Cheers was I into the nineties. Oh, I salad and scrambled I know, baby. Ha! <laughs> and that's like, but I don't know. That's like me at the piano, like but at like eleven o'clock at night. Salad and scrambled eggs. They're calling Thank again. Thank you very much, Santa. I love you. And so I didn't good. know that was Kelsey Grammer singing that. Yeah, it's so him much. actually singing Toss Salad and Scramble Eggs. And it's him playing piano as well. He, Kevin Smith had started a podcast called Toss Salad and Scrambled Eggs where they just talk about Frasier episodes. Fuck, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome. I would, listen to the sh- I, I would listen to the shit out of that. I love Frasier. It's one of the few shows that I've watched all the way through multiple times. Well, speaking of the 90s, that's like the show that I used to watch. Like, my mom would fucking put it on. I loved Frasier. We, she loved it, too. We watched the shit out of it. We recently started watching it again here. Yeah, we'll watch it together. Because I, I like just putting it on the background when we're, like, you know, cooking snacks or something like and that. And we have watched, we have recently, well, you have recently experienced the Twin Peaks experience. Yeah. Now, I've seen... I don't want to talk about Twin Peaks I'm right saying, now. I'm I've afraid seen, if we talk about it, I'm no, going to I'm not going to say out. anything. I have seen all of Twin Peaks, like, in its entirety, and, like, season three, and, like, the prequel to it, Fire Walk With Me, which is, like, some people see it as a standalone film. We are right now almost at the end of season two, so we will be we will be convening on, on, on an episode several episodes that have to do with with Twin Peaks but I don't want to ruin anything for my for my love here. Don't. I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't want to hear it. I never would. Did you realize that there was a Star Wars movie in the 90s and Is that it? we got the original trilogy re-released in the 90s with all new scenes added into it and like remastered? No. Yeah, remember I'll what? never it's one of my favorite trailers and I don't know why. I think it's just cuz the Star Wars was so exciting. It's like for an entire generation uh people have experienced the Star Wars trilogy, the only way they knew how. And it's like a TV screen showing, like, the Death Star or, or like, the the Star Destroyer and, like, a TIE Fighter. But it's it, but now, you can check it out the way it was meant to be seen. The special edition trilogy. And, like, the TV explodes and, like, a TIE oh, Fighter yeah. comes in. And it's like, Star Wars, the special edition. And it was, like, every month or every two weeks, it was going to be, like, A New Hope. And then Empire Strikes Empire. Back, and then Return of the and Jedi. The Jedi yeah. So it was over the course of like three months, they basically re released them, and it was all new. Like they had, that's where the Job of the Hut that's scene where is that, with that Han Solo. That weird scene came in, yeah. Yeah, and the new endings and some of the different effects that were added in there, especially with the Empire with the cloud, cloud cars added mm-hmm. and the background scenes added and whatnot, and the fireworks over the Ewoks village at the end of Jedi. Oh, yeah, I forgot that they added those fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Star Wars toys, of course, came back just prior to that, but Phantom Menace came out in 99. Big time, yeah. So that squeaked it in there too. 
Uh, it just it just fucking made it right in time. It made it right in time. Mm-hmm. May '99. My God, and that was a good film too. And the Matrix came out in the '90s. Oh God, I mean, I remember friends of mine buying a blue and red cars, and they're like license plate plates being like blue pill and red pill. It was like there was a like husband and wife, and they bought like they liked the Matrix so much that they they did this for a film that's so uh, set in technology. And driven mm-hmm. by technology, it doesn't feel that dated. No, it really doesn't because it kind of just feels like just the, kind the of thematic what's elements going of on. it, like rays above it, all the whole Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole and everything. Big time because that's that's timeless. But Keanu mm-hmm. is probably in. Keanu the, doesn't age. No, he doesn't. I just saw him as a fucking tumbleweed the other night. But in 1992, he was in the film that I had seen more than any other film. Oh my god! And this is such a good film too. And be excellent to each other. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yes. Yeah. First one came out in the 80s. Excellent Adventure. I think it was 88 or 87. Wild Stallions. Uh, but 92 mm. was Bogus Journey. And we we finally got the third one. But Bogus Journey is so amazing. That's Again, such a fun film. Killer soundtrack. Megadeth. Faith No More. Mm-hmm. Kiss. Just great great sound it reminds me of like a slaughter beavis, it reminds me of like a beavis and butthead like episode like all the sounds so right? you i mentioned the simpsons beavis and butthead ren and stimpy ren and stimpy fuck yeah oh my you god you know like more adult cartoons finally start yeah. coming out and, and primetime stuff around that too futurama king of the hill oh, yeah. i mean and like don't lie like i mean like a lot of people got like a lot of their music served up to them on like beavis and butthead like they'd have those shows on, and they'd put well, on. Well, Jesus, you want to talk television and stuff? Like MTV, they'd put on shit like much fucking music. much music, like unplugs. There were so many unplugs that like I loved, but I won't get into that. But like it just well, there's only one unplug that I will get into to, with you. With me? Because it, you're the only person I could get into this unplugged with, and I think you're the only person, and maybe like our son, who likes this unplugged more than anyone than like else we know. Which is like the Kiss Unplugged. Oh, so good. The Kiss MTV Live Unplugged. So good. Is the most fucking, like, it is the biggest, like, piece of Kiss masterpiece I have ever seen in my fucking young life. Maybe I'm old now. I don't know. No, but it comes, it's such an interesting time for Kiss because it would have been what everybody would have thought would have been the end of kiss like volatile like Absolutely. revenge came out yep. revenge is an amazing album it's a it's a heavy metal hard rock album in the early 90s so it, it ha- hits hard it has fuck. that metallica metallica black album sound that countdown to extinction sound and it's just like thick and raw and like really heavy and like overproduced but in a good way like, does it doom Oh, uh, it's not quite Doom. It's dude. not quite Doom. No, oh, it's fuck. it's definitely metal. It's not like Doom or Sub Doom or Doom Doom Gloom and Doom. It's just like metal and hard rock. Sorry, okay, to, sorry to... to simplify it, but it's just you know. Well, you know, I don't know. It's a man-sized predicament. Oh, it's a thick one too. It's a thick one too. <laughs> yeah. I love that song. But fuck. A Kiss Unplugged is awesome because it's the culmination, <sighs> and that album because it became so big, or that experience became so big, and of course they did release it as a CD. Yes, they did. That's what started the reunion tour and Psycho Circus as yes. well. And a Psycho Circus. That was that was it, the tour and that I saw. That brought the original members back, which mm-hmm. unfortunately sucks for Eric Singer, who's a far superior drummer, and oh yeah, Bruce Eric's- Kulick, who's I think a better guitarist than Ace Frehley. Especially at that point in their careers. Yeah, maybe at that point he was playing playing more competently. Playing circles around Ace. But, you know, Gene and Paul had recognized the business opportunities of I got the Ace Freely. I got Peter Chris waiting there for me. Yes, yes I, I do. do. I do. Big time. Yeah. In the garage. Actually. Weezer Blue Album, great debut album. You're dinking around playing Weezer all day. I might yeah. put some Weezer on my Instagram, you know. We'll see what happens. How long have we been recording? Do we I have a know. time limit on this? Not really. Okay. There's never a time limit on anything. I don't know this is your show. I'm just here talking 90s. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be so here. So if there was like a, if there were some 90s movies that you kind of like had to like that part with and you wouldn't cry about. Are there a few like real stinkers? They were just like, why was this made? Oh, I'm sure there's thousands. I'm sure there are thousands. 
I would probably not miss something like True Lies. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie with Jamie Lee Curtis and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Schwarzenegger, and it's directed by James Cameron. I know a lot of people that like it. James Cameron directed that? Yeah. That was a steaming pile of dog shit. Um, yeah, you know, Showgirls. I, I, I would, Showgirls. Showgirls was on my list. Oh, That's my Paul God. Ver, Paul do you remember Verhoeven. Showgirls? Of course I do. Holy fuck. Of course I do. I, I didn't understand it when I watched it. I probably still don't understand it now, but it's a, it's a cultural... Icon it, film. It's a touchstone for so many mm. people now. Well, it, Elizabeth Berkeley kind of like destroyed her career. Well, there you go. Say by the bell once again. The connection. I'm so excited. Oh, if they would have put that in there, that would have been like the thing on the cake. It, that it's been great. It like Rocky Horror has a whole cult following now. Oh, big time! It's, it's like Magic Mike. Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. What about? Didn't Striptease come out in the '90s too? Or like I Demi don't. Moore. The name sounds familiar, but I don't know it. It was like a, another kind of showgirls movie sort of type thing, but like Demi Moore takes off all her clothes. Was Pretty that before sure. or after Indecent Proposal, which is a 90s movie? Yeah, it's another 90s That's movie. That's a what great about? 90s movie. Yeah, it was. What about right. Fatal Attraction? i never seen Fatal Attraction. What? The fuck? The closest I got to Fatal Attraction is like our relationship. Shut your mouth. You're so <laughs> funny. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Fucking bunny boiler. You want to talk about 90s movies that I do want to keep? It's Disney stuff. Oh, Aladdin, yeah. Beauty and the Beast. And you like Lion King. No, I don't love Lion King. It's only that I watched Lion King a lot because it's more my sister's I, age. I hadn't seen Lion King until like two years ago. I know, because kids, yeah. right? Yeah, but then there's the other half of the 90s of Disney stuff that is like... Questionable. Well, the one that stands out for me is Emperor's New Groove. I'm pretty sure that's in the 90s. I think it's like 98. And Tarzan is growing on me. Yeah, Thank I you, like Phil Tarzan. Collins. I love Phil Collins. You know what? I love Phil Collins. But I can do without Pocahontas. If you want to sweep some movies away. Ooh, goodbye, I can sweep, Pocahontas. And that I can movie should not away. have happened. That, oh. I can sweep away Hunchback Notre Dame as well. Yep. And like, Pocahontas is just like an embarrassment. It's just like so culturally fucking inappropriate and and inaccurate. Why is her hair always blowing? What the? <laughs> That's another thing. Like, I'm sure all my indigenous friends are like, "Oh yeah, I totally have an answer for there's that." There's no version like, of Fuck the, this movie. There's no version of the Pocahontas story or legend or you whatever know, they call it in the retelling uh, that's ever been done that has ever been, you know. Uh, not whitewashed in some way. Yeah, it's all. Covered. I I, it, I it really is like, like snowing white privilege all over mm -hmm. that fucking movie. The closest I, I think that I, that I've like liked, and I'd have to go back, and I'm sure I'm going to sound like an asshole now for saying this. No. was a new world, the, the Terrence Malick film with uh -huh. Christian Bale's in it, Colin Farrell's in it. Mm -hmm. um, I think Christopher Plummer's in it too, and it's just like a really hardcore look at it, and you know. Nobody looks like heroes in it, for sure. Anybody that has white skin in that film do not look like heroes. Because they weren't. You so, know? And Disney Disneyfied like, bad they things. And they, and they not only Disneyfied it, they tried to market it and, like, oh, merchandise the shit out of it. Like, but I it remember, failed. I know it failed. Did. I remember seeing it as a kid, and I remember... I remember distinctly thinking there was something fucking wrong. I had no interest in it at all. It didn't do anything By for the me. time it came out, granted, I was 15 or 16, so I was like a little beyond the Disney years. Yeah. And that's why Lion King never appe appealed to me. But when you watch the documentary, Waking Sleeping Beauty, which looks which is, at Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and Lion King as like those four pillars that brought Disney animation back. It was a great Everybody house. didn't want to be a part of Lion King. They thought, oh, it's going to be Pocahontas. That's going to be the next Beauty and the Beast. And they had heard the Colors of the Wind. And they go, oh, we don't want to be on this Lion King film anymore. And of course, Lion King came out and did like bonkers. Elton and John like, and all Pocahontas that. Pocahontas tank. Yeah, it did not do well. Uh, well. They did not do poor Pocahontas in that story any justice. I'm trying to think of other movies that I could do without. I, I Like you said, there's I kind of like everything to a different degree. Yeah. Uh, just some of the big blockbuster schlocky stuff that, I don't know, it just didn't have the impact. It just felt like derivative of other stuff. Like, like a lot of people like were like, oh, sequels, did you love like, like Die Hard like, 2 and yeah. 3? I mean, I, I like Die Hard 3 better than Die Hard 2. What about but... Deep Impact? Well, it's funny. I brought up Armageddon earlier with Aerosmith. Yes. I mean, there was a lot of paired movies that came out in the 90s. We got Deep Impact and Armageddon. We got A Bug's Life and Ants. Independence Day. Like, I love Independence I Day. I love Independence Day, too. That's... 
fucking Will Smith getting jiggy with it. Na 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 na. Men in Black nah, nah. came out in the nineties nah, nah, as well. Nah, nah, Adams nah, nah. Family Fuck. one and two came out in the nineties. Good films as well. Man, when I was listening to like I was trying to like get in nineties moods and stuff. I was listening to music. I was like, Alexa, play a central nineties. You know what she did? The first thing that came on Cakes was, Paradise? No, it was hypnotized by Biggie. And I was like, Yes. I'm surprised it wasn't like waterfalls or something. Oh, TLC. Snoop Rob knows all. You're like surprised, bands. aren't you? I'm not surprised that you know waterfalls. When you have your guest uh, Fallon Bowman on, yes, to talk about stuff. Uh huh. I've got a, a, a musical game for you guys to play. Oh, great! And until you do the rap from Waterfalls by Lisa Left Eye Lopez, there hey. are no surprises in this relationship. I Listen. seen a rainbow yesterday. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. Do it. Suck it. <laughs> I'll do shoop if you do that. Do it right now. <laughs> Listen to you. You've seen the goods. <laughs> what? Don't look at me like that. I'm giving you a beat. I Drop wanna you. shoop, baby. I knew you were going to start. Yeah. Oh my Anyways, God. what Hilarious. else? I, I don't know what other movies I'd sweep away. I can't. I can't think of. But if any. there was a few more that you couldn't live without, what would you like add to that list? You know what that I, mean? I couldn't live without. Yeah, like just you couldn't live without. Oh. They just like, couldn't go away. Nineties movies, time capsule. Nineties movies. If you had to like stick them in a time capsule and be like, you need to watch this. This is, you need to. Not yeah. just things that you like, yeah. but like any like the layperson. Yeah. See, that's different because I can only go by my experience. Because somebody would say. You know, Armageddon is a film that you need to watch, but not me. Yeah, I think I saw Armageddon in theaters. Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, uh, you know, Liv, Liv, Tyler. Liv, Liv Tyler. That thing you do would be going in my time capsule. I would say that thing you do would I be in mine it. too. That is a fucking great movie. I could not Big come time. up with top 10 90s films with everything else potentially being destroyed. What 10 films would I save, you know, or what 10 90s films would, would you I carry transport? Out of a burning building? Would I transport to Mars to pass on 90s movie culture to? I, I couldn't, I, there's the no way I could do it. I couldn't do it. Because it's such a good I, I era would say, you and know there's what? so many good Kill me, movies. Because I don't want to live in a world where there's only 10 movies from the 1990s. See? See? Like, we haven't even talked like Shawshank Redemption. Fucking Shawshank. Yeah. God damn. That was a great movie. And especially, like, a film that's been adapted from a book. Yeah, a Stephen lot King. Of the t- I know. And a lot of the time, that cannot be done well. Yeah. Or at all. That's a hard thing. You know, another movie I could probably do without is Cruel Intentions. Ooh, another movie adapted from a book. Secret Society. The skulls. Remember, like the string of films that were like. Oh my god! Oh my god! Cruel Intentions, the book, was actually excellent. The soundtrack was great because it started with like placebo. It had like Brian Molko singing like every me and every you. The cast was not bad at all, but like what they did to that story. Felipe Reese Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. And they were like married briefly, had some kids. Hmm. It was like a, a time where like anything teen edginess they needed to do. And I think that was kind of like sexy. And I think part of that was based on the success of the original Kitty story called The Craft. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Manon told me to say that. Manon told you to say that? <laughs> told you to say that the original Kitty story was The Craft? Isn't that where you guys... Well, fuck yeah, it is. You know what? Yeah, sure that is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. we got all our looks. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. You know, well, fucking... I'm going to go call the corners. I'm going to call it a night. You guys know where the fuck to find me everywhere. Where, Rob, where, is, where, where does one find you on the internet? I am on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Rob McZob or at Rob McCallum Films. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. I'm out there. I have a YouTube channel as well. Look up Rob McCallum, writer, director. You'll find me. Mm-hmm. If you like cartoons, action figures, toys, video games, anything pop culture, I'm probably working on a documentary for it or i have one out there find your ass on beard oil roulette every thursday night yeah that's right spinning the wheel spinning that mouth off on the chat oh yeah and you always know where you can find me every 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 week you can find me there all the time you can find me at 21st century rocker mom 
on your Instagram. You can also find me on your tick, 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 tickety talk. You can find me on there doing weird shit, mostly to just make my kids laugh and piss people off. There'll be some new stuff coming down the TikTok pipe. You can find the Tandy Candler channel, and you can also find me on tweet, tweet, Twitter, tweet, tweet on the street. You can find me on Twitter at Tandy Candler. I will see you all again soon. Thanks for coming to the surprise drop with, with, with my love, Rob. We love talking 90s movies with you. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Thanks for chatting with me. Let's go call the corners, Menon. <laughs>